Welcome to one of the island of Ireland's famous castles. This is here in Northern Ireland, just a few miles away from Belfast. And I'm so excited to show you around. Here's a little passageway. And we are joined in by a special guest. I'll introduce you just in a little bit. But let me show you this. It's kind of cool. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. Makes me feel like I'm in Game of Thrones. We're joined by Darren. Hello, Dan. <laughs> and Darren, you've been watching for a, a long time. Yes. Since I started. Yes. Darren has been a hardcore viewer since starting Urbanist. Even before I started Urbanist. Tuning in because you really love New York. Yes. And uh, you and your wife took amazing photos there. It indeed. Yeah. We've just had a fascination with New York mm -hmm. for years. We finally made it in 2005 for a friend's wedding. Mm. But we only had a week there and it wasn't long enough. Oh, yeah. So the next time was 10 days and then it wasn't long enough. So we finally went, got married and stayed for two weeks. That way we were able to get around all five boroughs. Oh, you went to all five. That you see on the TVs and the movies, and just wanted to go where all the places you've seen on TV. It was just iconic places. Yeah. Because there's nothing really that cool in Northern Ireland. <laughs> Until Game of Thrones came over. Until Game of Thrones came, <laughs> and then. <laughs> interest in Belfast became. It's not the city to go to for terrorism. Or bombs. It's another city to go to for culture. Yeah. A lot of bars. Again, a lot of American companies have come over and using the paint hall to mm. make a lot of international movies, including the new Dungeons and Dragon movie. Oh, cool! Which part of it was filmed right here? Oh, it was filmed right here. So oh, that's it was passive. filmed right here. And there's pictures of Chris Pine and Hugh Grant. Really? We're, we're here. <laughs> um. And how, long, how far away are we right now from the city centre? From Belfast city centre, it's just 10 miles. 10 miles. Oh, that's not that bad. 10 miles away. And this is one of the more famous castles because you mentioned there was... ...as well. Yes. And Un this, Unrati, yeah. this dates back to the 1100s, ladies and gentlemen. So, quite a while back. And we had a little bit of service issues before, and that's why we restart. Take two. Here it says, Albert Edward Pier. The new harbor was opened in 1885 by the Prince and Princess of Wales upon arriving by special train and then being driven around in open carriages along Albert Road, West Street, Marketplace, and Castle Street. After the Prince cut the cord to open the harbor, then he drove the spike of the harbor junction railway. A plaque on the East Pier head records the occasion right over here. Today, leisure purposes. And oh, a rail used to connect into the, the actual castle. Yes, that would have been where they brought like munitions and stuff whenever yeah. they started using cannons. Oh. So this would have been the quickest way to get the stuff from ground level up because the ships would have just come up yeah. even further than where they are now. So this would have been like the main sort of area for ships and commerce and trade mm -hmm. before Belfast was uh, built. It basically was two villages on each side of a river. Right. And then, I don't know what year it was, but then they started to dredge the lock to make ships able to come in to Belfast Harbour and then they were able to build the bridge across and link the two sides to turn it into a town and then into the major city. Mm, that's fascinating. And you saw, you, you mentioned earlier to me that it, this was also involved in World War II. Yes, Carrick uh, Fergus would have been a staging area for a lot of the, the US troops would have mm. came here to do their training to get them prepared before going over to uh, the D-Day landings. Oh yeah. Whenever they arrived, they started mingling with British troops. Mm. 
and a certain group of troops in particular that were well trained had a lot of uh, different skills from what they had. Yeah. So they asked for a load of volunteers and they got 75 volunteers from the the American army got together, mm. done a lot of training like the SAS and that's whenever they started the uh, Let's go back to William of Orange as well. And that was the first U.S. Army regiment formed outside of the United States. And let me say hi to everyone. Hello, Kay. Hello, Timothy. I am back. Hello, Ronald. Ronald says, winter is coming. Indeed it is. We're going to a few Game of Thrones spots. Uh, hello, Dolores. Dolores has also been watching for the longest time from Ireland. Uh, another Irish yes. suburbanist. Yes. Spoke to each other over Facebook. Oh, cool. Okay. About different things. So this is William of Orange, and um, we're gonna repeat the same thing we said in the last video. But you you were telling me very briefly, uh, he was uh, involved in a battle against he was, the Catholics. Uh, whenever the the Catholic Church was driven out of England uh, with Oliver Cromwell, then the royalty became Protestant. Mm. So King James was a Catholic, so he fled to Ireland and he wanted to take his country back. So he got a lot of the Irish peasants and a lot of French and sort of oh. other com countries that didn't like yeah. Britain together to try and take back his throne. Wow. So Prince William of Orange came over and married the Queen. Yeah. And he led the British troops with a lot of Dutch and a few other uh, countries again that were loyal mm -hmm. to Britain. They came over here and this is where they landed before they made their way down through Belfast to the, the Boyne whenever they first ran into King James and had a, a, the battle at the Boyne. Yeah. And then on Protestant culture they have celebrated that battle which was the Protest Protestantism taken over from Catholicism in England, but the English don't uh, celebrate it the mm. way the people in Northern Ireland would. Oh, yeah. Uh, and you mentioned that the orange colour yes. is involved with him being yes. an orange. Yes, because yeah. he was from Holland and a lot of his troops were from Holland. They sort of settled in Armagh, which is one of the six counties here. Yeah and then they started the, the Orange Order, which was a, a, an organization in Holland at the time. Mm. So then they started doing the same traditions and started up their own lodges in Ireland, which then became Northern Ireland. And that's the, the, the people that whenever it's the 12th of July, which was when they celebrate the Battle of the Boyne, that all the Orange men would get together and have a parade through the middle of the town center. Yeah. And a lot of supporters would come out. He barely that. he barely appears in the Republic of Ireland, so it seems like he's more he's more um, for because again, yeah. Ireland being like an Irish Catholic country, he came over. I think he originally was a Catholic, but married into the Protestant. It was very confusing. Queen, yeah, yeah and he led the troops to fight against the Irish. Ah, oh, I see. I see. So there that we would go. Be why there's not much, many statues of him in the, the south of Ireland. Who is his true height? He was quite small for yes. a Dutchman. <laughs> he was okay. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Yeah, he looks um, yeah, maximum 5'4. Read a little bit of this right over here. So, actually, let me tell you. Um, actually, your last name sounds very similar to Boyne. <laughs> it is. Uh, <laughs> the Boyd name is yeah. Scottish. Oh, interesting. It is from the Isle of Brute, which okay. is just a small island just off uh, the mainland of Scotland oh. near Glasgow. Mm -hmm. Would be the nearest main city to it. That's why that's why the Northern Irish accent sounds uh, has some similarities to Scottish. Yes, because in, during oh. the plantation of Ulster, yeah, it would have been the Scottish came over because it's closer it's 25 miles I think at the closest point yeah we could basically wave over to Scotland and 
They basically yeah. came over. Yeah. Because they were already doing trade with the people from around the coastal areas. Mm. They came over and they took over sort of like the lands and started doing the farming there, which is why, as you say, the accent around the coast and parts of Northern Ireland is more like Scotland. Yeah, and then in the US, the early Im immigrants were Scot-Irish. So. Yes. Oh, fascinating. And that's why we have a few US presidents that are descended from this area of Ireland. Yes, wow. Andrew Jackson's parents yeah. came from this area. And just around the corner, there's a replica of the house oh, cool. that they would have mm. lived in. Oh, that's amazing. So shout out also to Paula and Alex, who Paula is uh, Darren's wife and Alex is Darren's son. And they've also been watching for the longest time. Alex has been watching since the crib, basically. From the crib, yes. <laughs> so yeah, give a huge round of hearts to Paula and Alex. And let me read uh, this over here to give you more history. So it says Carrick Fergus Walled Town. Carrick Fergus town walls are the oldest stone walls in Ulster and some of the best preserved historic town walls in Ireland. Building began in 1608, and although parts of them have been removed over the years, the circuit can still be traced to the present town center. And here, here, all the way down there. And medieval Carrick Fergus, the beginning of the town, was the power base of the Anglo Norman earldom of Ulster started in the 1170s. And let's see what else is interesting over here. This was a high-ranking trading port during the 13th century. Carrick Fergus was listed as one of the most important ports of Ulster. Ulster is one of the provinces of Ireland, four traditional provinces. And a lot of people call Northern Ireland Ulster, right? Ulster, yes. Yeah. And wealthier citizens of Carrick Fergus could afford to construct their own stone townhouses. No, oh, cool. It's amazing. And then the seventh a lot. Uh, Carrick Fergus remained the principal town of Ulster until the mid 17th century when Belfast overtook it as the main hub. All right, let's walk around. This as well, uh, because I know he watches my video sometimes. <laughs> well, your biggest fans as well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're wearing a very special shirt. I am indeed. Let me, let, let's do a reveal. <laughs> Darren is a true, true urbanist. <laughs> That's awesome, man. I'm so glad you're, you're sporting the shirt. And you bought a few other things, right? Yes. Yeah, you have a few other things. Well, several. Hey, Francis, saludos. Estamos ahora en el Castillo Mejor Preservado in Irlanda. We're in the best preserved castles here in Ireland. I'm going to use the word Ireland. I know there's a lot more political terminology that can be involved. I'm just going to blanket use the word Ireland, uh, referring to and here. Cram with 900 years of history, Carrick Fergus has guarded the approach to Belfast Low since 1177. What is a low? Lock. 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 Lock, like, like the Scottish lock yes. as well? Okay. Is this the different spelling? Yes. Yeah, okay. okay. That's lock as well. Besieged in turn by the Scots, Irish, English, and French. Yes, because the uh, Scottish also invaded here while they were fighting their war of independence with England many centuries ago as well. And here it is, how Carrick Fergus looked like. All right. Let's go. Let's go up here. Will you be doing a bench test on the throne? <laughs> I don't think there's a throne in there, no. Because no. it wasn't used as a house, right? No. This is purely military. So there really isn't a throne. And the castle only opens to specific tours, so we won't be able to go in. Yeah, at the moment, I think, because of COVID-19, it was only by pre broken only. Five, wow, yeah, very small groups. Yes. I wonder what that sigil is, if anyone knows. Is there a large Scottish population in uh, Ireland, asked Duane. How there, about Northern Ireland? Is there there would be, yes. There would be? Yeah. Uh, where I work alone, there's at least five Scottish physiotherapists. Oh, okay. That's but nice. They're all living here. Let's go around down there. 
Ooh. Wow. It's huge. Thick, thick, thick stone right over here. A very, very sturdy structure for lasting so long. She said earlier about the presidents that came from Ireland. Yeah. John Paul Jones. Yes. He uh, was a naval captain for the American US Navy. Yeah. And apparently the first naval battle was fought off Carrick Fergus. Oh, okay. Uh, he had sailed up Belfast Lock. Yeah. and find the British so soldiers were all with the cannons and basically blew out the ships mm. and that was the first naval battle of I'm kind of shocked that it was so close to Irish shores because Ireland Ireland uh, went to, to help. Yeah. It was really strange because the, the Ulster people went and they said to the British, we'll fight in the war. Yeah. If you keep us under British rule, the Irish said, we will help you out yeah. if you give us our own rule. Oh, yeah. So both sides fought in the First World War, it's during the Second World War mm -hmm. that the government then, yeah. they stayed neutral mm -hmm. and the North of Ireland was used for staging troops and training. Oh, I um, see. But I think they had like a, an arrangement that any prisoners of war captured in Ireland would be kept in Ireland and mm -hmm. wouldn't be handed over to the Germans. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if we crashed, hopefully not. But uh, how long did it take to build this uh, small castle? Definitely not hundreds of years like it took to build Newgrange. And Darren will be an excellent tour guide, says Xander. You have excellent delivery. <laughs> you do, you know your history, that's so awesome. I know my history, but yeah. it's trying to Start stuttering. No, you're amazing at it. <laughs> I'm actually really surprised how, how good you are on camera. You said you'd done a few vlogs. I've uh, done two. Two, okay. I've only done two, but before mm. that, I made a couple of music videos. Oh, cool. Back okay. in 2007. Just sitting at home with a laptop, two cameras, mm. and the audio was on mini disc. That's mm. how long ago it was, mini disc. Oh, wow. It's, it's still good. <laughs> and basically, you just took the two cameras and the audio. I'm just using a normal laptop. I yeah. was able to splice everything up and fit it together and got the audio in sync, oh, which cool. was amazing. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> old school uh, music old, video. Old school at all. All right, so here is one more time Carrick Fergus. We're about to explore a few places with uh, Game of Thrones locations, but. Probably the next live video I'm going to show you is uh, at the Giant's Causeway, so stay tuned, everyone. And yes, uh, named Led Zeppelin. Yeah. All right. So we are on the schedule because uh, <laughs> it's also a very big country. Uh, so everyone, or two countries. Thank you, everyone, so much for tuning in. I'm Ariel. This is Darren. Oh. Darren, thank you so much for showing us around Carrick no Fergus problem. and also for driving us uh, for the rest okay. of this journey. Uh, everyone give a round of hearts to Darren for his kind hospitality, uh, for uh, providing a way to get to all these places. Everyone, keep being awesome and always keep exploring. Yes. <laughs> Have a good day, everyone. Bye. And always do the wave goodbye, but let's do it.